I guess my background with my health is that I've always been quite a sickly person since I was a child. I had many food allergies and still do, and I had chronic bronchitis year after year, which then turned into chronic sinusitis on top of that and chronic upper respiratory tract infections, throat infections. I still continue, continue to get these regularly. When I was about 18, I got a series of bronchitis and sinusitis that I just didn't clear up and just got told repeatedly by doctors that it was post-viral tiredness and that it would eventually disappear, which it didn't. Um, I had a lot of cold sores and just a very low immune system, chronically fatigued, couldn't go to university. Um, probably, it would have been about six months after that, I got diagnosed with Epstein-Barr virus and have had chronic fatigue for about nine years since then and only over the last six months have I been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and multiple sclerosis as well. So I did have many tests for multiple sclerosis over the years but got told that I was just anx anxious and that the symptoms were just part of so-called chronic fatigue which is what I often get told I have. You know, in your case, particularly, uh, we, we would say, you might say you have atypical MS because you don't always have a good diagnosis for MS. And in, the, in our studies, what we find is that most patients with atypical MS and also have chronic fatigue, virtually all these patients had multiple chronic infections. From your childhood, it suggests that you've had chronic infections your entire life that have gone undiagnosed and untreated. So I think it's about time that uh, you really have a comprehensive analysis done of the types of uh, intracellular infections that we've been discussing today, uh, such as chlamydia and pneumonia, my, various species of mycoplasma, um, Borrelia, I don't know if you were ever bitten by insects, uh, um, but um, it sounds like you've probably had these infections from the time that you were a child or even before you were born. Yes. And you're, you mentioned that your mother was uh, quite sickly with uh, signs and symptoms as well. So uh, from our experience, uh, we've, we've seen this before, is that these types of intracellular infections can be passed to the fetus. They can certainly be passed uh, in the birth canal. They can be passed to children. Uh, when children pick them up, uh, they can undergo a number of different conditions. Either they can uh, grow much more slowly, failure to thrive, uh, or they can show a lot of different manifestations. Um, some of these present as autism spectrum disorders. In other cases, they present as uh, chronic immune problems. Um, but in any case, they're really quite related to the infections that you've had probably your entire life. Now, because of this, your immune system is not operating as it should. So to overcome this, you're probably going to have to, number one, uh, have these infections identified. Because I think undoubtedly you have infections. Once they're identified, they have to be treated. Your immune system has to be built back up. You've probably, because you're so chronically ill and have chronic fatigue syndrome, your mitochondrial function is probably down. So you need lipid replacement therapy to, to help repair that. Uh, you may have had other exposures as well that uh, need to be taken care of. So uh, that's generally what we find with patients who've been sick a long time. They have multiple problems, they have multiple infections, they have other exposures as well. As I mentioned, fungal exposures, chemical exposures, so on, heavy metal in some cases. And all these have to be taken care of before the patient can really recover. case of something like Epstein-Barr virus, when I get a blood test it shows that I've had it, but I don't currently have antibodies to it. So I get told that's not a problem and that it's not causing any of my issues, but would you, would you disagree with that and say that Well, that's one that I'm not sure of, uh, because uh, more than 90% of us have Epstein-Barr virus and in most cases it really doesn't cause any problems, any clinical problems in people, uh, we're not sure if that in itself is causing any of the problem. My, my own feeling is it's probably not. But in combination okay. with all your other infections, and it's just adding to the accumulation 
of all these different infections. It's a cumulative process or a cumulative problem. And so when you tend to collect all these infections when you're ill, and as you get iller, you collect even more, and infections of different type, and you probably have some fungal problems as well, mm -hmm. and you've started to collect all these infections, so you have to one by one identify them and treat them, restore you to a more healthy state, uh, which means you need to start avoiding certain things in your life, get on a proper diet, restore your immune function, restore your mitochondrial function, and then I think you'll, you'll start to uh, find that your life is going to be a little easier, a little better, but it's going to be a long, slow process of recovery now. Because it's taken so many years to evolve. It's taken a long time for you to get to this state. It's going to take a long time to reverse it. Mm -hmm. And, but you would say to someone, instead of getting told that basically there's no hope and you just need to go home and wait to slowly get worse, you would just disagree with that? So, oh, I completely disagree yeah. with that. I mean, there are things that can be done that can be done right now and should be done right now. And the first thing that you need to do is to look at your diet, mm -hmm. correct the deficiencies in your diet. That's the first thing that you can do. Other thing you can do is lipid replacement therapy because this is an all-natural supplement. Uh, you can be building up your immune system by taking certain supplements that will help build your immune system back up. Uh, so there's certain things that you can do yourself right now, not involving any physicians at all, to help restore your health. So I could purchase the lipid replacement therapy without any consultation with a doctor? Absolutely. Okay. Because it's a natural substance. Yes. It's just, we call it a functional food. Uh, so it, along with other functional foods, should be used by everybody to help restore their vitality, their mitochondrial function, their immune systems, uh, their nervous system, and so on. So these are the things that we can do ourselves. We don't need a physician to do this because it's, these are functional foods. Yes. So you, would you say that chronic fatigue and rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis are all just manifestations of infection rather than individual diseases, which is why a lot of people have more than one autoimmune disease. Um, we feel that uh, the common link between all these is probably uh, infections, although there may be some other genetic yes. aspects of this as well. We know that uh, people have to have the right susceptibility genes to get these different diseases, so that's an important function that we haven't really talked about, but you can't do much about that. No. You're given your genes, so you're pretty much stuck with them. So what can you do something about? Well, you can do something about your diet, you can do something about your mitochondrial function, you can do something about your exposures that you've been through and treatments and so on. What you can't do yourself is to identify the types of infections and treat those infections. That you do need a physician's uh, help to yes. do that. And is there any way that with my history of generations of immune dysfunction I can help prevent my daughter from having problems as well? Well, your daughter's probably already been exposed. Yes. So the first thing that you need to do is do the same thing that you're going to do yourself. Get on a healthy diet, um, take lipid replacement therapy which again is just functional food. Mm -hmm. So you need to pursue the functional foods. You also need to avoid certain environments. Um, there may, she may have been also exposed to certain things that uh, need to be taken care of, like chemicals or even heavy metals. Mm -hmm. So these are things that, all of these need to be considered. Yes. And I think the modern way in which we're dealing with patients is each patient is unique, their exposures are unique, their genetics are unique, their origins are unique, the, the family units that they come from and so on. All these have to be taken into consideration in determining what their individual problem is. And it can be quite complex and quite daunting. Unfortunately, there's no single place where you can go to, to get all this help. So you're going to have to draw upon your own reserves, and draw upon your own intelligence to help yourself and to help your yes. family, to help your children. And the entire family should be doing this. So you're husband should be doing this, your children should be doing this, everybody in the family should be switching to better diets, taking these functional foods, building the immune system, 
uh, making sure that uh, you've reduced the amount of exposures of some of the nasty things that are out there. So these are things I think uh, that we, we have to be more proactive as, as individuals, as patients, as family members, as fathers and mothers and so on. Another question I had was, with chronic fatigue or with MS, you go through periods of feeling not so bad and then periods of feeling terrible. Is that because the infections, you, you might pick up another one or because they be become in an active stage or is that why you, because I will at times feel quite okay and then yes. for no reason feel dreadful again. Exactly. Um, often there are certain triggers that set okay. this off. And we know what some of these triggers are. For example, we know, because we've done a study on this, that trauma is one of these triggers. So if you've experienced trauma, if you've been in, for example, an automobile accident, mm -hmm. you've had a skiing accident, or anything that causes trauma, broken a leg, this will generally set off a very strong episode of, of chronic fatigue. And the reason for that, it has to do with the infections, it has to do with the immune system, it has to do with some of the other hormonal systems and so on in your body. All these interplay in a very important way. But whenever your system is shocked, it tends to set off all these things, and where your body can somehow come to equilibrium with the infections, with uh, all the other things, the damage that's been done. If something throws that out of equilibrium, even a little bit, then you can just really have a terrible relapse. Okay, so things like stress or... Stress, trauma, um, uh, it could be any type of shock from uh, a poison, for example. Okay. If, you, if, you, if you inadvertently took something that uh, poisoned your body, this can set it off. Uh, so we know some of the things that can set it off. And would you, I, I personally don't want to go on any of the, the MS medication that's out there at the moment. Would you, what are your thoughts on the ones that suppress your immune system, which is basically the idea of what MS medications are? I'm generally against uh, any treatment which suppresses the immune system. Yes. Because this is simply masking what's going on in the first place. The reason our immune systems are, are reactive in general uh, is because there's an infection there or there's something that is not quite right. And that's why the immune system is responding. What we found with patients, for example, with MS patients, particularly with atypical MS, which mm -hmm. it sounds like what you yes. have. Uh, so these are patients that are not... Um, uh, they go through wax and wane. They, mm. they don't... They're not... Uh, steadily progressing MS. Generally, the, these patients have a number of reasons that, that kicks off their MS episodes. Mm -hmm. And those are the patients that we find, um, almost all those patients have chronic infections, almost all those patients have other contamination problems as well. Um, and those can be corrected, their diets can be corrected, their infections treated and so on. And they do recover. And we've seen this with lupus, we've seen this with MS, we've seen this with a number uh, of these uh, chronic uh, illnesses mm -hmm. and neurodegenerative diseases that at least we can stop the progression or in some cases even reverse it. The problem is with the most difficult diseases uh, like amyotrophic lateral yes. sclerosis. Once you get to a certain stage there's so much cell death in the central nervous system that's occurred that we can't reverse that. We can stop it from going any further but we can't reverse it. Mm -hmm. So this is what you have to be afraid of and be warned of is that um, you you can't let these episodes get out of control. Yes. You you have to take care of them when they occur and find out what's causing them, stop it, treat it, and try and return back to a somewhat normal state. 